and welcome. We all watch the documentaries and movies, either in the cinema or on TV, but who actually puts the movies together in the final cut that we see? Well, Sam Matthews is one of those people, and she's our guest, Sam. Hello. Hi, Malcolm. Great to be back. Why did you get into film cutting, editing? Well, um, in high school, I liked to make little movies with my friends right. and the school got Sony camcorders, which were right. the first cameras that, that Blackwood High School had. Right. They, they didn't have them in the curriculum at all. And so my friends and I used to beg to take them home on weekends and make films. And soon enough, we were making films instead of writing essays. Have you um, got any of them? Oh, I'd have them? to dig them up off a floppy disk or something. It's, oh, uh, oh yeah. a floppy disk. <laughs> yeah. Who remembers a floppy disk? That no, that's a bit of a lie. It was a CD, but still, it, yes. how do you play a CD these days? It's hard. It's true. Mm. Well, it's true. I've been dubbing over all my old stuff to file, and I've got a VHS machine, but I'd previously dubbed from Umatic to VHS, and now then to uh, DVD, and now to file. Wow. So I don't know how many generations they've lost. Because TV wasn't that sharp then. No, but they've got an amazing quality to them if you go back and look. It really, you know, a sets, fuzzy quality. Set, well, it sets it in the era, doesn't it? Well, see, so I that, remember, mm. though, actually physically cutting the film because it was all on film. Uh, not that, but we used to do a lot of outside uh, shooting of stuff. So the, the little gate would be there with the film coming in and you'd, you'd watch it as you pulled it through the screen to see where you're going to cut it and then <laughs> you'd cut it. Then you'd get some clear tape to stick it together and that would go back on the reel for the next thing. It's amazing. And, well, it's and all computer-driven now. Well, I never did that and, and, and I know that the first computer non-linear editing systems actually used that kind of theory mm. in mm. order to design the software. So, yeah, that was the transition. Well, they used to have to cut videotape as well in right. the early days. Yeah, it's true. two-inch tape. Right. Oh, like physically cut physically it. Physically yeah, cut wow. it. Yeah, wow, okay. Yep. And glue it together. Amazing. It, it is amazing. Amazing. When you think that really that's within probably your lifetime that that change has occurred. Mm. So you're making the movies as a high school student, but then something must have happened between that and being a fully fledged editor. <laughs> True, true. I'll try to give it to you in a nutshell. I mean, I, I guess I was quite fortunate to have supportive parents when that when I said, you know, I, I really enjoy this and I want to pursue filmmaking. They said, great, go for it. You've got to do what you love. And not everyone gets that. Oh. Um, so Actually, I it's so important, isn't it? It is. And it but is. Then how do you explain to parents who don't really get that? That's probably the mm. million dollar question well, for, that's a, for right. a kid. That's right. And it wasn't, it wasn't my challenge. So I'm very fortunate in that respect. And I did have friends in school who, who I made films with who didn't have that same yeah. that good fortune. So they had to yeah. go into something else when they left school and, and become other things. Is it a hard industry to be recognised to get the good stuff? I think it takes time and it's also what I've learned over the years is it, it, it's important how you brand yourself. So I, I started, I think in the beginning you have to go out there and you have to volunteer for everything and do any, anything and everything because that's how you get experience. I'm but really then... glad you said that because mm. that is so important mm. but it's not something that a lot of today's youth really understand. No. And you go to school for free and you learn for free but you've still got to learn, well, you pay for it in one way or another through tax or private schools. But, but when it comes to learning the profession, you can't actually learn that anywhere other than on the job. True. It's a stepping stone, isn't it? it and, mm. and you're right. The experience you get on the job is, is indeed different to, to the experience you get studying. But, hey, I think this set is almost as close as you can get to the real thing, I reckon, for oh, this kind of well, work. Oh, well, for TV it's, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. But now everything's switched, not... Ah, or computer driven. Indeed. Press the button and oh, I'll line that up. Oh, yeah, that'll do. Oh, we'll move on with that. I've been doing a bit of that myself just ah, recently. Nice. Um, okay, so you're working on something at the moment that we can't actually talk a lot about. Not we just talk yet. a little bit about it. I can give you the top level. Yeah. Yep. So look, you I give oh, me the what the, the top, top level. level, the top top line notes. Oh, okay. Suppose. Top Does line that, notes. Yeah. Yep. So, so although this is a doco, isn't this, it? That's right. This is a doco, yep. and and although 
um, you know, my career is founded on post-production, so that encompasses editing and colour grading and that kind of stuff. This is where I confess I'm not very good at branding myself because I still like to do too many different things. But that's um, what makes life interesting. It does. But also it gives you a much broader, if you like, brushstroke for the artistic side of it. Because the more you understand about everybody's job, the better it is. I think so, and I think it helps when it comes to directing as well. So, Absolutely. so, so I'm, I'm this this new project. I'm actually a co-director, oh. um, uh, and it's a, a feature-length documentary with with Julie Kalsif. Um She's she's my co-director, mm -hmm. um, and it's for a, a production company, um, Jam TV in Melbourne, and it's uh, a film about a former AFL player and coach by the name of Danny Laidley, who I think much of the Australian public would have heard about. Mm -hmm. um, she was actually outed a few years ago as transgender by the media. Um, so she's retired now. She's not a, not a current player, um, but she kind of went through a horrendous time and also um, did some... She, she was, I guess, at fault for, for quite a few things as well. So she... she um, I don't want to go too deep into, the, into no, it, but there's some really see. interesting themes about the documentary that this kind of, this, this struggle with her identity, that she's lived lifelong in a very kind of masculine industry. Oh, yes. Uh, in, and, so. and in the public eye. Um, and, and then it, her, her life got to a point where it was just so off the, the rails um, and there were police involved and she was abusing drugs and that kind of thing. So it's a very, it's a very multi-layered story. Is that because, and... and we need to be cleaner about this. I guess you're also transgender. Indeed. But is this is this something that the public really need to embrace to really fully understand that we're not always born with the same equipment and brain together? A absolutely. Is that a simple well, way to explain it? It is a simple way to explain it for sure. Yeah, yeah. And I and I think the the human population is incredibly diverse and so far more so than than it's been credited for I think over the years True. and when you actually think about the act of of uh, reproduction generally but when you think about what has to occur because every egg cell is female and so everybody starts as a female and it just depends what happens after that with hormones and why would one end work with the other it, is that another very common one to say? Uh, yeah, true, indeed. Yeah, that, that's certainly... Um, I mean, I'm not a biologist, but I've, I've no. certainly heard that before. And, um, and Well, I look, think that's why, that's why documentaries about all of these things are so important in our culture, mm. so that we can understand. Uh, and understanding takes away all of the nonsense that can go on. And how dare people out people when it's none of their business whatsoever. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, that, that's... I a... didn't just out you, though, did I? Oh, no, that's OK. <laughs> yeah. But I think it's different here because, you know, I live my life very openly, so that's fine. Yes, so we've known each other for a while because you've been on the program before for the Paddy Film Festival. That's right, yeah. And that was an open, inclusive film festival for people for anything and everything. That's right. Yep. Just uh, uh, Yogi, the festival director. His intention. Uh, where Who's listening up? He is. At he's the a, yes. That's right. He's a, he's on the on the he's doing it all on the again cruise tonight. Year. Indeed, he is. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, it was a it was a um, fabulous idea, really, just to, to make sure. You know, why not make the focus of a festival? to be, let's hear from voices that yes. we have we don't often hear from. And but also, how exciting to find out it's not. It's not, everything isn't the same. You know, it's the beauty of humanity, the diversity of what humanity is. Otherwise, we'd all be uh, planting seeds and pulling up carrots sort of thing. <laughs> this is Because we have to feed ourselves, if that <laughs> makes right, any sense. That's right, that's right. Yeah, isn't it? Isn't it great the world we live in now? Well, yeah. it genuinely, yeah, it's getting it's getting better. Yeah, isn't it? genuinely, mm. it is. So, just getting back to your editing again. So, where does this? How do you get into the mainstream stuff? Um, like here in South Australia, we have the South Australian Film Corporation. They have the most wonderful theatre for people to edit in, where you can see what's on the big screen in front of you. We're talking to the. A CEO of, the, of uh, the Film Corporation in a couple of weeks. Brilliant. Um, which I'm really pleased to do because a lot of people don't realise this is happening here in South Australia. So can you log into that or are you looking internationally for work? 
Oh, gosh. Look, I, I think, um, I mean, the, the industry itself is so diverse. So, you know, it, it, it's from the kind of work that you do for it can be, you know, it can be uh, branded content and TV advertising, web advertising, through to, uh, you know, film, feature film, drama, scripted con narrative content. And, and also, still free to air TV, uh, I guess. Oh, TV. Because that's um, still hungry. Prime, free to air TV, prime time TV. Yeah. Like, I mean, you know, when I, back when I was studying, um, you know, everyone wanted to be a feature film director or editor or, or what or have actor, you. Mostly. Yeah, and and in drama, and it was all about about an, a, an amazing drama or comedy feature film. Um, but in the time since I was studying, that shift has really gone into to prime time TV and the streamers. You know, Netflix, Netflix, Amazon, um, and so Netflix and the budget probably a good Netflix. word. Netflix, Netflix, I like that. Yeah. I might start a new company called that. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Can we edit for, this for out, all, please? No, no, no for, all, no. for all of the films that, that weren't successful, <laughs> yeah. we can play them on Netflix. Oh, uh, Netflix. Netflix. All right, let's do it. Or oh, actually change to... it, Netflops. <laughs> so have we come That's up with a new better. thing? Yes, we have. So that means we have to take a break right now because we're going to come up with more in a minute. Sam Matthews is our guest, and Sam is a editor of. It's not. We can't say film editor anymore. It's. It's just. What? what no, is, I think that term's still used. He's still film that, editor. That's fine. Yes. Even though that's, you're working with video, I suppose. Well, is yeah, video the true. right. Is video even the right I word think, anymore? I think we use film in terms of feature film, so the ones that you go to the right. movies to see. Yeah. And yeah. documentaries, we just call documentaries. Quite often. Yeah. Yeah. So to finish finish that thought yes, from the previous exactly se we're about segment, before, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I guess my interest over the years has shifted to documentary as well. Um, I love documentaries. About, uh, yeah, I watch documentaries more than anything else now. Oh, me too. And I, and you know, back when I was studying, I thought documentaries that's boring. Why would I want to? Do factual stuff when I can imagine, you know. But but now factual I think factual stuff is truth, more interesting. Truth is stranger than fiction, True. and and um, it's a really great way to kind of um, channel my advocacy work as well through through my filmmaking. Well, well let's talk about your mm. advocacy work. Mm, mm. Why did you bring up a word like that, advocacy? <laughs> Say that three times quickly. <laughs> advocacy, advocacy, advocacy. Advocacy, yes. advocacy. Yeah. So um, so there was a time in your life you thought. I'm not thinking the way I need to think for the way my body is. It was that. Ah, oh, yeah, for for almost as long as I can remember, really. Okay. Yeah. So, so uh, really, and I, and what's so lovely is that I am here today, and I can work in the industry that I want to work in, um, and be myself. And at one why for you? quite a long, well, quite a long time in my life, I thought those two things were mutually exclusive. Now, actually, that's a really good point to make, and that's very true. And everybody that has this sort of confusion with their life says exactly the same thing. We thought we were the only one. Mm, yeah. Is that how you felt? Oh, absolutely. And I think, it, you know, if it weren't for the internet, it would have been so much harder to, to, to figure myself out and, and know that there are other people like me. How did your parents, uh, did your parents pick this before you told um, them? No. No, I, no, they didn't. I don't recall them mentioning. So, I, I mean, I've been out now for about 10 years. So I, I transitioned when I was 26, or that, so that's when I began anyway. So it's a, Into, yeah, it's a okay. bit of a fraught term transition because it's kind of like I did it and then it was done, but that's not, that's not really a thing. It's kind of, it's a no. life journey, I think. It is a life mm. journey. Is that late, do you think? Oh, gosh. I think, I think uh, you probably speak to anyone like me and they'll always say they wish they'd done it earlier. It doesn't matter right. what age they are, really. Right. Um, so, I, you know, I, I try not to... To kind of have too many regrets. No, well, we're all alive. Yeah. Why regret anything? We're all In, alive. That's right. And every experience we've had has helped us to understand life better, I think. That's right. But so when did you identify this within yourself? Did you, hmm. did, was there a point of time you thought, oh, I get it now. That's what I'm here for. Oh, here for that's. I mean, that's that's um, really is leaning into the advocacy word, isn't it? I mean, I, I, I guess you know, it, it just. I, I mean, I am who I am, and I think that I wrote took a song about that. that. Uh, is that right? <laughs> yeah, I, I am who I am. Uh, oh, what I am, what I am. Ah, right, nice. Um, yeah, I mean, I. I um, 
I think it just took me a long time to be comfortable with who I am. So, so that was did, the challenge. Did you have help along the way? Uh, Were there professional uh, yes, people that helped? Yes, yes, very few at the time in yeah. Adelaide. One one psychiatrist who um, yeah. I went on a waiting list for a very long time to see, and then I saw him. Um, and then it was also a process of connecting with community. But when I first reached out to the trans community in Adelaide, which was very small in terms of you know those who gather mm. at the time I remember going to that first meeting and I and my hand was shaking they offered me a glass of coke and I was so nervous <laughs> to be there because I I didn't want to accept the label I didn't want to accept that this is who I was so yeah so that's really interesting I didn't want to accept the label well I, I mean do I we have to label each other well it's well that's well I think it can be functional can it so so i i yeah, kind perhaps of so but even within that to 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 have to use the word transgender um you're a person uh, you know it's and you're you've got a skill and you have a private life and really in many ways that's where it should stop however for people like you were then it's how can you help lead i suppose because you'll be able to identify the way you were thinking with someone who's also thinking, I'm alone, I'm the only one. Absolutely. And I think we're less so these days. We're really fortunate that, I mean, mm. the youth of today are so so different. The um, world to, is much more open. Oh, it is. However, in America, all the rubbish that's going on there, I mean, you, you even think, in what are these people thinking? Even in the UK, there's huge backlash and... and, and you know, the, there are some really touchy topics as well, and it becomes politicised, and we become a political football. Um, yeah, exactly. A, and and it's dangerous. It's really dangerous. So, just imagine somebody like you at fourteen is watching this program, and and I would imagine having the identical feelings that you're having. What advice would you give them? That's that's a really tricky age because it's an age where you're you're possibly going through puberty. Yeah, yeah. Um, you may so you or may need more confused. You, well, well, yeah. I mean, puberty is hard for anyone, right? Yeah. So, and then it's also about you know your parents. Your parents still make decisions about your life, and are your parents supportive? Um, and then you've got your school community as well, and is your school community supportive? So it's a really tricky question, yeah, and I, I wish I could make it better for them, to be honest, but I, I, I think they... By, t- by talking like this is making it better. Oh, good. No, really. Uh, yeah, I hope because, so. Thank because you. you've actually made a really valid point. This is a really tricky age for all humans because mm. we're all going through a transition, changing from childhood to adulthood. That's right. That your body's doing things that you don't quite understand. Your emotions are literally on your sleeve. Mm. And now you've got another thing to worry about. I don't think I fit in there and I don't think I fit in there. Where do I fit in? Yeah, yeah. I think that the, the best thing I can suggest is seek support where you can find it, whether that be your parents or your teachers or your friends. The internet has got assistance I would imagine but you're you know what you just said about going to the group the the, the club it's club group oh, social group, group. yeah group. um initially and feeling confused as to oh coke stay still stay still how were you dressed at the time oh as my former self right. as, as my closeted self yeah okay and did they encompass you and sort of oh, give you... absolutely absolutely yeah yeah and, and but I think the challenge at that time was that you know you'd turn up to the group one week and the, and the door would be locked because the venue wouldn't help or oh, you know right. they, it was always there really it was very um, f- fragmented as far as support right. and connection went. But being a film editor, has that changed any opportunities for you? Uh, look, I, I think I've, I've really um, managed to be, you know, embrace who I am and, and, and bring that to my work. And, and I did actually make a little web series back in 2017. Oh, yes. well, we and, talked about that. What uh, happened with that? Can people see that? Um, I need to find a new home for it, actually. It's okay. a, it, it was on... Um, I view on ABC for a, for a couple of years, and it's a beautiful, oh, right. beautiful little series, just little six little ep- short and episodes. And what were they about? Uh, it was about six transgender artists of different ages, genders, and um, artistic 
persuasion. Oh, okay, so, so when you say artist, that's a very broad it is, yeah. description. So we, so. so we had a, a, a dancer and a writer, poet, right. um, and a, a musician. I could, I can't remember them all now, but yeah, diff all different artistic talents. And it's wrong to think that these people are necessarily just in the arts, because we now know that there are there are doctors, there are politicians, there are sports people. That it's every it, everywhere. Oh gosh, yes, and sports is. The, the next big challenge for society because that's a huge topic to wade into in terms yes. of um, how, how to um, balance um, inclusion and fairness. And I could talk for a long time about that. Well, talk away. Oh, gosh. We've got a minute. We've got a minute. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. I think it's a, every, every situation is nuanced and community sports should be inclusive and embrace people because sport is, and, and, and activity is so healthy and community is so yeah. healthy. And when it comes to elite sports, um, things aren't as simple as gender. There are things like height and weight and strength and having to power a larger frame with uh, less um, testosterone. So every conversation is nuanced. What a valid point. Mm. What a valid point. Yeah. And that, I've never heard anybody say that before. Right, right. Uh, no, what a valid point. Oh, cool, thanks. Yeah, yeah. because that's what they're saying. You know, you, you're, you've got a male body mm. and, and you're competing with women as a woman. Yeah. And that's actually very true because you would lose muscle tone, yes. I imagine. Yes, indeed, yeah. Yep. And it's about, it's about you know, we, we embrace Ian Thorpe because he's got webbed fingers. He's a, he's a freak. We love him. Incredible. Um, why is it so different when you've got a trans person in the mix? And I use that, that terrible word deliberately. Mm. But, but why, when it comes to gender, does that shift the equation and can we ex now exclude people? So I think uh, we've got to be really careful when excluding people from elite sports because it sends the message to the, all of society. Correct. Yes. Mm. Correct, that yeah. they don't fit in. Yeah, yeah. But then we've also got to be fair and make sure that everyone has a chance. So Yes. Mm. Well, if you're only five foot two or whatever that is in <laughs> centimetres, um, yes, I suppose, you know, playing against someone who's two metres tall, that could be a problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, well, mm. you know, the world is moving so quickly in every direction, certainly in your chosen career and in understanding all of this. Uh, hang on, we've got to take a break. Uh, we'll be back to talk a little bit more with Sam in just a moment. Our special guest has been Sam Matthews, editor and all-round good person. Thank you so We're much. We're just saying, I just said to you, is there anything you'd particularly like to say in our last segment? of all the things you've oh, done um, and your advocacy. Oh gosh, I just, I, I think the message really is just to, to be yourself, do what you love. Um, ask and for a, help if you're confused. Ask, ask for help um, and there's a place for you. You can do anything, yeah. As you've proven. Oh gosh, <laughs> thank you, <laughs> shucks. <laughs> no, no, but it's great. And look, I hope you have great success. This doco, which we can't talk too much about until it goes to air, but um, it's going to stand, by the way. So okay. keep an eye out on stand. Okay. But you're watching this as you're editing it, and has that helped you in any way? Has that helped you understand better, or or has it helped uh, or as you've put all this together? Because you've got the final mm. say in what it looks like. Mm. I mean, that's the editor's job. Uh, uh, well, in fact, I'm actually co-directing this, so I have to give credit to my my editor, David Scarborough, on this job. So it's a slightly different role for me. Right. And, and, um, but it's sort sure, of in between it's the a, two. It, it's, yeah, it's a, it's a collaboration. Yeah. Um, so I'm learning a lot um, for, for ha in having this slightly different role and, and how to tell a story in a way that uh, will relate, people will be able to relate to. Yeah. I like the fact you just said I'm learning a lot. Isn't mm. that great in life? There's always something new to learn. Always, always. Can't know it all. That's right. So when you grow up, what do you want to be? <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, Look, I, I try. I just live in the moment. I, I try to anyway. Oh, I, I was yeah. hoping you were going to say something like um, a famous Australian uh, director, oh. producer, editor, scriptwriter. I'll even be in the films as well. 
The doco. Oh, wow. I actually Make prefer, a doco about I, yourself. Oh, I actually prefer being behind the camera. That's probably a good one to end Why on. Is so, that? Oh, <laughs> yeah, no, this is a bit... I'm out of my comfort zone it's tonight. It's fascinating, but I've been, It's been great. Yeah, it's fascinating yeah. watching... And thank you for doing this interview because you said to me, I don't think I've got enough to talk about and now we've run out of time. I'm yabbering all night. No, no, yeah. fantastic, no, it's fantastic. Been great. It's been a really oh, good chat. So I asked you before, were you Sam before? I was Sam. And, and my, you're still and my, Sam. My folks never thought they'd call me Samuel, so they just put Sam Man. and I and it kept works. it. I kept it. It works so, every way. Yeah. Congratulations. Right. Thanks. It's been welcome. absolutely lovely to talk to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Sam. Lovely. Good luck with the, with that particular doco and everything oh. that you do in the future. And the same to you. Keep yourself nice till next time we see you on our time.